I'm Patrick Murphy Racy, Sony Artisan of, of Imagery, and um, I wanted to do a video on the custom settings, the menu settings for sports photography on the Sony A9 with version 6.0, which came in um, 9 of uh, 2019. So it's a few months old, about six months old or so. Um, but I never actually got back and did a new settings list. So we're going to do that now. So um, I'm just going to go through the menus one at a time um, and just explain why I use what I use. And you can follow along if you like. Uh, it's easiest if you have your camera ready. So here we go. Okay, the very first thing I'm going to do on my A9, uh, and this is the A9 Classic, not the A9 II. So I want to be very specific about that. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm set to um, continuous high for the motor drive and AFC or AF continuous. Uh, when the camera comes out of the box, it's usually set to um, AFA, but you want AFC. Um, so make sure it's on AFC so it'll continually track whatever you're shooting. Uh, that's very, very important. So what we're going to do is do a menu dive now. And uh, so let's go in and see what we got. All right, so the first one is file format. I am particularly a JPEG shooter, so those of you that shoot only RAW can do this. If you shoot RAW and JPEG, you can do this. If you shoot JPEG only like I do, uh, you can set it here and go. Um, so there you have it. Uh, RAW file compressed is what I usually use. When I do shoot RAW, I do use compressed. I don't. The uncompressed is massive, and it takes up even more hard drive space, so I kind of stay like that. Because I am a JPEG shooter, I like extra fine. The, the out-of-the-box setting is going to be fine, so make sure you change that if you are a JPEG shooter like me. And uh, you're always going to want to leave that image size big at 24 megapixel. Um, so <clears throat> that's good. Aspect ratio is 3.2. Um, I don't really change this too much. However, you are now able to shoot uh, squares right out of the A9 Classic, which is really cool. Or you can shoot 16.9. So if you're doing work that's going to result in a video, like I often do, you can actually shoot in 16.9 in format, which makes it where you don't have to crop it later. But for typical uh, still photography, I'm going to use 3.2. Um, and then APS Super 35 is going to be automatic. Um, I want to explain this. If you use, there's a lot of lenses out there, a ton of lenses that are designed for APS-C. And these lenses will work great on your A9. Um, you can literally just put them on. The camera's going to automatically sense that it's an APS-C lens, and it's going to reset the image area in the viewfinder and on the back of the camera for that. Now, the problem is that when you use an APS-C lens on an A9, um, you're not going to be able to use the entire image area, and so your size, your file size will drop. Uh, so I want to be very clear about that so that you know to expect that to happen. I always feel like it's better to do noise reduction in post-production rather than in the camera. High ISO, noise reduction, I leave on normal. Um, color space, I use Adobe RGB, but that's only because I shoot JPEGs. So if you are a RAW shooter, you can just ignore this. Don't worry about it. Lens compensation is kind of interesting. Um, this will do chromatic aberration, shading, and distortion compensation. Um, these are all really important things. If you're using a, um, an old uh, Nikkor 504P lens, this is very important because it's going to be have it's going to have massive cr chromatic aberration. Uh, you'll have purple fringing and all kinds of stuff if you shoot backlit and you look at your highlights and stuff. So that's what that's for. If you're using primarily Sony glass or more modern uh, glass made by Sigma or, Net or Tamron, you're going to not have to worry about that at all. I don't do anything here, so I'm going to just skip it. Um, and uh, this is important. Um, AFS I never use, so I just ignore that. Priority set AFC. So what this is asking is when you're using autofocus, do you want the priority to be on release, on the camera taking a picture, on the autofocus being accurate or balanced? And in my estimation, balanced works best. Um, the only exception can be with the 500 f4 and 120 to 3028 Sigma sport lenses. Um, and probably the 150 to 600, I've never shot that lens, but uh, I've shot the other two. They work great on the A9, uh, but sometimes you might have to weight it towards release. 
Um, but it just depends. And it also depends because that was a while ago. That was like over a year and a half ago that I was using those lenses. Now I'm pretty much all Sony, so I don't really use them anymore. But you'd have to keep up with the MC11 firmware updates, the adapter. And don't forget, those lenses are firmware updatable. The Sigma glass is smart. Those sport lenses are really smart. And um, by using the Sigma docking feature, you can upload new firmware to the glass itself, unlike Canon glass. So make sure that when you're trying to figure this stuff out, when you're using uh, adapted lenses, that you're using the most recent firmware upgrade in the camera and the adapter, and if you're shooting Sigma or Tamron, in the lens as well. So uh, Sony has done some firmware dates in some of their lenses, but not, not all of them. Um, some of them don't need it. Um, but uh, anyway, so just bear that in mind as you go. I have all the wide, so I have all six tracking features, but I only have Flexible Spot M and Zone uh, in the old school settings. So I've just removed everything else because I'll never use them again. Uh, I'm convinced of that. So uh, you don't have to do that, but I just, you know, I just can't, I just can't say enough good things about tracking autofocus. I mean, when you have an A9 or an A92, that can do tracking autofocus. It it changes everything, and it 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 completely unlevels the playing field where you're going to be at such an advantage of everybody else that's shooting a DSLR. It's it's just not even funny. So, um, all right, enough about that. All right, so here we go back in. Um, let's see here. I don't use this, but some of you might. Um, this is kind of cool. It's switch vertical horizontal AF area. So if you are a type a shooter that's going to change a lot from vertical to horizontal, um, in certain sports this would be very conducive. Um, you can actually change this to AF point only or AF point plus AF area, and it when you go from say landscape to portrait, it's gonna it's gonna slide everything in that direction. It's kind of cool. So I don't use it, but it, it's a very useful thing. AF Illuminator should be off, especially for any indoor um, sports that take place like volleyball in a gym or basketball, hockey, uh, any indoor sport, you've got to turn this off because it'll emit a beam to help the camera focus in low light, but you don't want to do that. Uh, face eye detection, um, of course, in, in um, 6.0, we picked up the human and animal. I don't really shoot, you know, I don't have a dog or a cat and I don't really do that too much there's enough on facebook to go around so i just do this and uh that's it so just leave it there i have never found a reason to do left or right eye only i just do um auto on that one and then uh face frame display i do turn that on because i want to see it working um and uh animal i'm going to turn off because i just don't use it um, so that's that's what i do there and um, AF tracking sensitivity. So if you're a Nikon shooter, um, just forget it says AF tracking sensitivity and call it lock on. So if you are a Nikon shooter and you're coming on a Nikon into Sony, locked on is the highest level of uh, stickiness, if you will. So if you're way down here, that's going to be like the highest locked on setting. Five is going to be the most responsive and the least locked on. So if you lock on something and you come off really quick, you that's you're going to be in five or four or something like that. The out of box setting is three. I don't like three. I think you should all try four. And honestly, for most sports, I use five. Um, so, but I'm pretty good at back button focus. And um, if you are not using back button focus, definitely stay at four. I would not attempt five because you'll you'll just miss a lot of stuff. It'll be off a lot, but, um, and I'll just say this kind of just to be funny maybe, but you bought an A9, um, you bought the most awesome autofocus camera on the planet. So why would you not want to make it do responsive tracking? I mean, it's awesome. So, um, yeah, just go for that. Uh, that's, that's about the best thing to do. And uh, I would say four for everything. If four is not sticky enough, then you could drop it down to three or two, but that would be rare. But I think what you should all try for is to get to five because that's where you're going to really see the power of the autofocus system and the speed with a breakneck speed that the autofocus system can work at. But I'm going to leave it four for now. 
Um, aperture drive and AF, you know, you don't worry about this, but it's just, it's, um, it's in valve with this lens. It, it has to do more with the, the big uh, 400 GMs and stuff like that. So uh, AF with shutter, I have off because I'm back button focuser. If you are using the shutter release to autofocus, you'll, that will be on. Uh, it'll be on out of the box, so you don't have to worry about it. And then um, now this, the, the A9, original A9 was the first camera Sony ever made to ship with pre-AF turned off, and you should never turn it on. It's just a death sentence for autofocus so just remember that don't do that i don't really use much of these at all so i would just tell you not to worry about it um this one down here is kind of cool to think about um circulation of focus point what this means is that um if you i've got it set on do not circulate but what you can do is when you're in the viewfinder you can use the joystick to move back and forth. Now I've moved it all the way over to the right and it won't go any farther. If you are using this and you do circulate, you can then um, move that point all the way and it'll just keep going all the way across the screen either way you go. So that's what, what's going on there. So I don't use this feature, but a lot of people that come out of um, DSLRs that use the joystick a lot may want to use this. Uh, so it's there if you want it. And that was a new thing in um, 6.0, I believe. We're going to ignore, ignore AF micro adjust because Sony doesn't, the lenses don't require it. Um, so don't worry about it. Um, the only reason why it's there is for using a mount glass with the Sony adapters. And I would very much guess that no, none of you are doing that. So um, <clears throat> this is big. Uh, we got, you know, three options now instead of just white. We've got gray, white, and red. And everybody that I know uses red for the frame color. So uh, it's just so great to have that. And just so you can see what that is, that's the red glowing thing right there. So that's that's what that is. That's It's so cool to have that thing being in there. It's It's great. So... There we go. And back into the menus. Um, I don't really do much here. Um, in fact, I don't do anything here. But I want to point out something that's kind of cool. Um, face priority and multi-metering. This is on for me, but I don't use... Um, but I use manual exposure for everything. So this doesn't matter. But if you are an aperture priority shooter or you shoot a lot with like auto ISO or something like that... This feature is kind of cool because what it's going to do is it's going to weight the exposure towards the face. So when it sees the face for autofocus purposes, if you have this feature turned on, then what it's going to do is it's going to weight the exposure to the face. So if you're severely backlit, say, the camera's going to do a good job of like opening up shadows on the face if the background's brighter than your subject, and it's going to help you. Um, again, I don't use this, but it's really cool that they have it. So that's what that is. I leave it on because, I don't know why, because I can. But I, I use manual exposure, so it doesn't really matter. All right. And then um, just moving through, don't use anything there. Don't use anything here. I want to point something out, though. If you are using aftermarket Sony um, flash units, meaning like Godox or Nissan or whatever you're using, uh, this would also go for Profoto or, um, you know, the... Uh, the Dynalite Rhyme Light system or the new FJ400 Westcott strobe. Um, make sure you leave this um, wireless flash feature off. And you saw that flash up there because I'm set to electronic shutter right now and it won't even let me turn it on because I'm in electronic shutter. And of course, you have to use mechanical shutter to use a flash on an A9. So, um, but make sure that stays off unless you're using a proprietary Sony strobe. Otherwise, just leave this off. Um, cool. I'm gonna, I don't use any of these either. Don't use any of these, uh, at least for sports photography. None of that. This is all the movie settings. So I'm just going to skip through these because they just don't apply for, um, for that. Display. Make sure your finder frame rate is on high. Um, that can, that's not on high when you get out of the box. So make sure it's set there. That's pretty important. Um, so just, you know, be aware of that. And, uh, zebra setting. These are all video, more video settings. So I would just skip that. 
Um, yeah, auto review should be off. If you're just coming out of DSLRs, you're probably going to use review a lot as a crutch because you're used to it, but you got to break that habit. So I want to encourage you just to start ignoring it because like if you're shooting available light, you already saw the picture, so you don't need to look at it again. Um, so, um, and you got 20 frames a second, so you're good. <laughs> okay, custom key. This is very important because this is where I activate. Um, it's basically the third setting. So um, this focus hold button, I typically set this um, to do uh, this. APS-C 35 full frame select. It's really cool. So effectively what you can do is on any lens that has a focus hold button, you can literally just punch that button and it will just zoom into APS-C on the sensor. Um, so it's, it's like having a 1.5x teleconverter built in. It's really cool. I think you'll like it. Try it if you've never tried it. It's, it's sweet. Your big one's AF on. AF on should just be AF on. And uh, you can also make the uh, number two button the IF button you can make that one something else like if you want to like you know uh, you can make that another additional AF on button or I've tasked this one to IAF which is it's just it's an old setting because tracking does IAF for me automatically without me asking for it so really the only thing I'm doing now at this point is the focus hold button and that's it so um, so let's get out of that one and function menu, this is all particular to your settings. So you can put whatever you want in there um, and then change it at will. It's, it's no big deal. So um, let's see. I do all I'm going to point this out. Lock operation parts is kind of cool. This is something where you can, if you're, let's say you're doing, um, let's say you're doing basketball on strobes and um, you don't want to change your aperture, or your shutter speed. You can literally just go ahead and lock all your operation parts or your exposure settings um, so that you can't bump them. Uh, typically when you're doing stuff with uh, in basketball on strobes, every time I pick the Sonys up and put them down, I'm changing the shutter speed typically or the aperture. And sometimes I don't notice right away and it's a pain. And this is a great feature to just lock out all those things so you can't change the exposure. It works great. So I'd recommend it. Audio signals. Um, I'm just going to say this about audio signals. Um, when you first get your A9, I would recommend you turn it on for the shutter only. And the reason for this is pretty straightforward. You don't want to continue shooting after the action is over with. And no matter who you are, you're coming out of a DSLR. They make a lot of noise. And the A9 is just going to make kind of a beep. The sound it makes is like a made-up sound that they recorded <laughs> that sounds sort of like a shutter. And, um, but what will happen is you'll notice when you, in your first couple of games, you're going to be shooting way beyond the point of peak action. And I think leaving the shutter release or the shutter audio on is going to help you get off that button quicker. Um, because you'll be shooting so many pictures, you won't believe it. Um, you'll spend a lot of time in post in your first couple of games, just deleting more than half your time will be spent deleting. It's just a waste of time. So for whatever it's worth, um, I, I like doing that. So that's, that's that one. So shutter only on audio signals. Um, I'm not going to get into this. Uh, the FTP transfer function, I'm going to leave that to Greg Gibson. He's, uh, he's the man on that. And I would encourage you to look him up on Facebook or on YouTube. He's great. Um, and uh, let's see here. I'm going to keep going. I do edit device name, like mine Mine is called A91. I have A91, A92. This is a big one. This is something I do in all of my cameras, regardless of what I'm doing. Um, I always do delete, confirm, delete first, because it saves you one whole button press to delete. If you, if you know the picture's bad, you're going to want to get rid of it. So just, just do it and uh, get it done. And uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to talk about this uh, touch operation. You'll notice that mine is turned off. Now, very important. Um, the touch screen feature is really cool for videographers. It is never going to work for action when you have the camera at your face. Um, and you can't really shoot action very well when it's down. And because you have tracking autofocus, you can already do it. Um, so I would recommend that you turn touch, touch operation off. <clears throat> and also... 
those of us that shoot um, left eye, which is me, means that my nose is going to end up on the screen a lot. And so if you if you're shooting games and stuff, and you're realizing that you're like your uh, autofocus indicator is way in the wrong place all the time, it's your nose. Like so, just turn it off, and you'll have a much better time of it. I promise. So touch off and uh, yep. And then all this is good to blow through here. So yeah. Oh, this is a good one too. Uh, this is always a good idea to write the serial number. This is something that they started doing um, more recently. And it, it literally puts the serial number of the camera you're shooting with in the XIF data, which is really good. Um, if your camera gets ripped off, you might be able to find it, search it. Um, and you can separate the cameras like which is which that way much better. So I would recommend doing that. Um, and yeah, that's about it. And of course, this is for version 6.0. Um, now this this video is only going to be good as long as 6.0 is still current. Um, that I know of, Sony's not planning on doing anything anytime soon, but you never know. They do them all the time. Um, they will do updates constantly to these cameras. So make sure that when you start looking at this video that it's, it's, it's about 6.0, not 6.2 or 7.0 or whatever. So... Um, but that's it. Um, that's kind of the, the end of my little menu thing. Um, I'm going to go back and try and edit this, so make it a little shorter. I'm sorry it's so long, but um, thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. And remember, these are just my settings. They don't have to be yours. So you can set your camera however you want to, but I get really good success out of doing it this way. So I'm Sony, Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy saying thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel and share this video if you found it useful with uh, friends of yours that also have the A9. Thanks so much.